When you clicked on this video and even as you watch it, your device is sending out data and requests to countless companies. Some of these are for vital functions like checking for emails, messages, software updates, supplying the video itself, or maybe they're connecting to domains for other reasons like telemetry, data collection, or maybe even malware you accidentally installed. This technological orchestra is forever playing, connecting to domains behind the scenes to ensure your devices work without a hiccup. And it's mostly beautiful. You'd be surprised how many applications next to the browser use analytics and trackers. It is deliberately hidden from them, so people cannot see, so people cannot care, and people cannot react. And the Podmaster attempts to change this. If you were to boot your computer and log in and not click anything, your computer would still be going through these processes. Your operating system needs to check for updates, it needs to make sure the time is correct on your system, some apps may be running in the background like Dropbox which are constantly syncing. If you open a program, let's say DaVinci Resolve, a video editor, it doesn't really require any internet access. Almost all functions work locally without needing internet. But if you were to analyze the web traffic, you would see Resolve still accesses the internet. The reason for this is pretty mundane, as Resolve has a sign-in to directly upload videos to the main platforms like YouTube. And Resolve also automatically checks for new versions when the program starts up. This all happens without your knowledge, and that's normally a good thing because these tasks are better left automated. However, this can be used maliciously in more ways than one. Many of us have heard of the invasive calculator application, which for some reason requires internet and a location permission. Now, if you were to actually analyze the web traffic, you would find that it's probably connecting to Google Ads, Facebook Analytics, and maybe even more invasive things like malware domains. To put it simply, when you install any program or app or just use your operating system, you have very little control over what each program is allowed to send to the internet. Previously and to this day, this is why we recommend digital minimalism, as the less you use, the less likely something malicious will happen, and we also encourage to use as much open source software as you can. Since the code is public, there is a larger degree of transparency over what's happening. This actually just happened with Audacity, an audio editing program, and it sparked important discussions about its upcoming use of Google Telemetry. But these are ultimately band-aid solutions without addressing the root problem, which is why we were thrilled to discover this privacy tool, the Portmaster. Savings Portmaster is a free and open source project with the goal of making you the conductor of your orchestra, or the commander of your castle's defenses, whichever metaphor you prefer. In short, you can fine-tune exactly which domains your computer is allowed to connect to to help reclaim your privacy and deal with this problem. Now, let's say Audacity pushes forward with adding Google Telemetry into their program and there's no way to opt out. You can just open Portmaster and block all internet access from the application altogether. Done. If you wanted to get nitty gritty, you can customize exactly which domains you'd like blocked from programs, from manually choosing the ones you like or picking filters tied to malware, ads, bad stuff, even NSFW and more. You can even block by the type of traffic, like P2P, if you don't want torrent traffic to be associated with any given program. When you think of a basic privacy step, it is often that people install an extension for their browser, and which protects them from trackers on the browser. And the Portmaster kind of extends this, so it protects your full computer from trackers, and it also encrypts DNS and all of that. It's just like this easy step. You download the software and you're good to go. Don't have to configure anything. So on paper, this is a fabulous tool, but how does it work? And is it even worth using? Before talking about our experience, I need to mention it's currently an alpha, so there may be some bugs as it's not a final release. Regardless, it's still incredibly powerful. The UI is well designed to be usable for anyone and it works. To start, it will do the obvious things we already talked about, like completely blocking the internet for a given program or choosing which domains you want to specifically block. 
but it goes a lot deeper than that, even allowing you to set profiles for specific kinds of Wi-Fi networks and even set different modes for dangerous or untrusted, and you can really do whatever you want with this. The neat thing is you can just install it and let it run in the background on autopilot, or you can spend hours fine-tuning this to work exactly as you want it to work. The versatility is just staggering. Personally, I'm the kind of person who wants to really customize things. So I'll open a program and watch the kind of web traffic happening inside the program. Um, I like to learn about it, but I also like to see what's going on so I can make adjustments. The moment I see something can be blocked, I take action on that. I did try the basic settings as well, and that's probably an easier approach for many of our audience members who may be new to these kinds of things. With all of these functions, you can successfully block nasty things that are otherwise incredibly hard to block without needing to make sacrifices, like completely uninstalling a program or forcing something into a VM or a separate device altogether. It's an incredibly useful tool for people who wanna take their privacy to the next level. One thing is that this won't replace other privacy tools. I think it's an important piece of the puzzle, but you can still use an ad blocker and have different methods of blocking ads and malware inside of your browser and use safing. Even safing on their website say, like this doesn't replace certain things because they can't block certain things that are browser specific. So again, this is just one extra tool. I don't necessarily think this replaces anything else. But there is one final piece of the puzzle that really brings this all home the SPN. The, the SPN combines the best from both worlds, from both uh, VPNs and Tor. Imagine something like the security of Tor with the speed of a good VPN. And what the SPN does, it spreads your connections across the globe. So when you visit one of these, like what is my IP address websites, when you visit three different ones, you will get three different answers. So there is no single source of where your traffic is coming from. That is all integrated into the Portmaster, so that is super easy to use. The SPN combined with the Portmaster gives you an insane amount of control over all the traffic that leaves your computer, which is otherwise pretty challenging to achieve unless you know what you're doing and you have the tools to do it. A good analogy is how on Calyx OS, a custom Android ROM, we've reviewed it in the past, you can fine tune exactly what kind of internet each application on the phone can access. Then you can run everything through Orbot to route your device's traffic through Tor. So really everything is being considered here. Though with Safing, you actually have finer control over what each program can do down to the domain and you're using SPN instead of Tor, which has different pros and cons. So the goal of Safing is good and easy privacy for everyone. So we want to give users the power to see what is going on their device and also have the power to then easily react accordingly and make it as easy as possible for everyone. So we definitely have work in, like ahead of us. And that's safing in what they're trying to do. The Portmaster is currently available for Windows and Linux with macOS coming soon. In the meantime, check out Lulu if you want a macOS alternative and they do aim to have mobile support someday, which I am very excited for. After getting some hands-on experience with the Portmaster, it has me loving it and wishing I had its functionality accessible to me on all of my devices at all times. If you wanna learn more about Safing, everything they do is open source, their devs are public and transparent, and friendly, and they've even done an AMA if you wanna learn more about their fantastic project and the common questions people have about it. Check out all the links we have below to everything I just mentioned, with the SPN probably being the only thing we'd personally recommend holding off on for most people until it's been more properly audited and examined and it enters more of a public face in the first place. We hope you liked this video and we're excited to see this project grow over time, one day leaving alpha into beta and its public release. <laughs> Godspeed. Also, please like this video, share it around, and leave us a comment below with your thoughts so we can keep our channel growing. Thanks for your time and goodbye.